Okay, this is our, our One World session. We are here to connect to the Zohar and to channel the energy of healing for everyone to know who is healing. Uh, the energy of elevation for those souls of those who we are close to who have passed from the physical realm. So we want to send them energy of comfort and energy of elevation of their souls. We also want to channel the energy of Habat Chinam, unconditional love, the energy of treating everyone in the world with human decency, and the removal of chaos and conflict from our world. Yes, this is being recorded. <laughs> Um, does anyone want to volunteer to read English for us? Verse 184. I'll well, read it. Yeah, is I can't control the background noise because it comes up from downstairs. So if it gets bad, maybe someone else will pick up. But it should right, well, let's right see now. How, there's, let's see how it goes. Yeah, right now it's quiet. So. Okay. The title of this article is A Prayer of the Poor. Which makes it sound like you would all, if you, you know, what does that even mean? Like, I, if I have money in the bank, I, my prayers don't count. Can't be that. Cannot be that. Um, 184. Tzlota lav ihi shlema kama malachi chabala ratfin abat rab. Kamatatomer kol rot feha hi sigu hav gomer. Uvagim da matzlin vahu rachumi chaperavon. Da samach the iu nachash velo yashchit da mashchit vehir ba leshiva po da af velo yair kochamato da chema begin the la yar defun batar tzlota the chama malache chavala talyan minayhu shiva memanan inun the talyan minayhu shavin v'chol rukia rukia inun mekatrigim the talyan minayhu ayin elef ribo. Okay, there's a couple of, uh, Phyllis, when you read the English, there's a word that starts with S. We don't pronounce that name. Ah, okay. S. Okay, if the prayer is not complete, many demons pursue it as it is written. All her prosecutors overtook her within the straits. This is why people pray. But he was full of compassion, forgiving, iniqui forgiving iniquity. Okay, so, so... We're talking about prayers. The issue here is like the Zohar is pointing out, well, there are demons that pursue the prayers. Why would a demon, first of all, there are demons. This, this is negativity. So why does negativity try to attach to our prayers? Like, what is that all about? Here we are trying to channel positivity, energy of healing, energy of protection, whatever it is that we're trying to connect to in our prayers, removal of our own negativity, removal of our own blockages. So what, what, is the, what does it mean that it means? This is the other side at a certain level. This is the other side trying to trip us up, trying to say this, you can't do that. You're not qualified. You're not capable. I mean, we encounter this all the time, but it's especially there when we're, when we're actually showing up in a prayful <laughs> consciousness. Because the, the other side, what paragraph 184, the other side wants to take that light. And so we have to navigate very carefully. So I have a question. The yes. last words of the sentence against the four clipot. What if I miss what's the four clipot? Well, we will get there. Oh, okay. We will get there. Okay. Okay. Is that your background noise? Yeah. Okay. She, she talks loud. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. So and then so so we have this verse from Echa, all the progress of all her prosecutors overtook her within the straits. Echa is the portion that's read on the ninth of Ab, the most intense day of the year. And so, you know, that's the day where we don't have any protection. The Satan has full reign. And we read that to 
you know, give us the ability to connect in a much deeper way. So there is always in this realm of ours, this balance between positivity and negativity, between the desire to receive and the, for, for ourselves and the desire to see for the sake of sharing. And so for us, this is all about connecting, taking our desire to receive and using that desire for the sake of sharing. But the other side is going to get our ear and it's going to say, if you're not thinking about your own needs, your own security, your own fulfillment, if you're not thinking about those things, it's not going to happen. There's a limited amount. There's limited slices of pizza in this world. And if you get your slice of pizza, you're going to starve. And that is body consciousness. That is our soul having this physical experience. Okay. So there's a verse that is said at RV, at the evening connection. And it starts with, but he was full of compassion. And that's the verse that we're, you're connecting to right now. So go ahead with that. Phyllis, your, uh, your mute is on. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. okay. Iniquity refers to S, who is the serpent, and he did not destroy, alludes to the angels of destruction. Often, he turned away his anger, refers to the klipa called anger, and not stirring up all of his wrath refers to the klipa called wrath. Okay, so there's a verse that, that is said at the beginning of the evening connection which reads, but he was full of compassion, forgiving iniquity, and he did not destroy, and he turned away his anger, and, and not stirring up all his wrath. That's the verse. That's the verse. Why is that verse there? So that verse is there is to counter all this negativity. That verse is there to counter these four clipot, these four shells that block energy, block positivity. That's the point of that verse. And that's what we're connecting to here. And again, this is one of the things that we did. There are the indications of four sources of energy right there, of negative energy the energy of this of the serpent the energy of the angel of destruction anger and wrath those are the four and those are the four things that get in the way of our prayers ascending to the point they need to to open up the channels of healing and fulfillment and energy protection all the things that we are asking for all the way, all the places in our life where we have lack that we're trying to channel the energy of fulfillment. Any yeah. questions about that? So, step number one in all of this for us is understanding that we have this ability to connect to the upper realm. But step number two is it's not a direct shot. <laughs> there are hazards along the way. One of the things that our teachers tell us is, do not bother praying if you're angry. That's going to be a short circuit. That's not going to work. The anger... Can you, can you pray to remove anger? Yes, you can. That was my question, yes. Yes, you certainly can. I mean, you can say Anavakoach. And that's different. And praying to so praying to remove that energy is different. But if we're trying to connect and we're trying and we're we're trying and we're not cognizant of the anger or not acknowledging that anger, not trying to remove that anger, we have an issue there. Because it's like, you know, we've talked about this, you know, you see someone who's angry and you're like, what got into him? 
Well, the other side got into him. Yeah. That's it's like, look at your head as the control tower. It's like you handed over the control panel to the other side. I don't know what got into me. I don't know why I did that. Well, because we let anger take over. Any questions about that? I do have a question, David. It's um, it's something about you. What you mentioned earlier about um, doing something for yourself versus for other people, and um, I mean, I kind of have an answer. Like, I kind of know the answer for this. But for me, it was like for me for the longest time. And maybe there's other, you know, there's other people who maybe take care of other people before they take care of themselves. And then it becomes kind of like an imbalance. And for me, earlier in life, I said yes to a lot of people. But I think the source of that was like, you know, because I, I didn't want to piss anybody off or I, I wanted to be liked. And so it was a, like, it was a big imbalance for me. So a lot, like a lot of my learning curve was to learn how to say no um, and take care of myself first, you know? So, right. I, yeah, no, that's, I was doing a workshop the other night and one of the workshop participants said, I just realized how much of a pleaser I am. Like she didn't realize it. And we all have that to a certain degree. We all have this, um, Andrea, it's, in my book is page, 264. We all have this pleasing thing. We don't know. We're not really present to it. Part of all of this, like even with respect to these four clipo, but let's walk, talk about this pleasing thing. Like we need to be present to like why we're doing what we're doing. So, so yes. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. So, so niceness actually falls under like a negative I don't know if it's a negative energy, but it's not, it's not helpful. And I can't remember what list it came off, but, you know, there's all these kind of virtues that you have. And niceness, funnily enough, isn't actually positive. It's like a, a negative accident. It's just the same way anger is, the same way like deception or whatever it is, whatever negative, you know. But And that was a surprise to me. Well, listen, some anger is okay. Like it's okay to be, it's okay to have, you know, to be angry about like, you know, my inability to understand the Zohar. I mean, <laughs> I'm just thinking, it's like, I, you know, cause those words are pretty broad. There's like a spectrum of like, it's okay to be upset sometimes. It's okay to be jealous sometimes in some context. It's, well, I could be jealous about someone else's spiritual elevation, about like how spiritually elevated they are. I like to be able to do it. Listen, when, when I started studying the Zohar and I saw how Eitan taught the Zohar, I was jealous. Like, I wanted to be able to do that. Was it jealousy or was it seeing, well, maybe it was jealousy, but it was also like wanting to aspire to that. I mean, having that. Well, I'm saying motivated. that what made me want to aspire to do that was, was like, I realized he was doing something and I wanted to do it. And I'm, you can call whatever you want. I'm calling it jealousy. You can find another word to express it. That's fine too. But that's an okay kind of jealousy. No, jealousy is, there's nothing good about it. I'm just saying in that context, you can call it whatever you want. Maybe it was the desire. Okay, to... so you're going to throw the words there and I'm just saying it was jealousy. I mean, you don't want to call it that. That's fine. And you can say the same thing about niceness. Niceness, there's two sides to nice. Being nice to the degree I'm trying to be a pleaser, that's 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 a problem because I'm I'm not I'm I'm betraying myself. But yeah. niceness, like to the degree my niceness is treating everyone with human decency, that's also nice. Yeah, I think it's like a fake nice, right? When you're trying to please everybody, but it's like when you when you're kind to like when you're genuinely kind to people, it's it's a different it's a different you know approach. Yeah, I mean, I'm <laughs> saying like you know, there's no way. Yeah, yeah, wait, say that again. 
I just cannot suck up to anyone. There's no way. He's just like so on me. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that. Probably people are, I'm like. <laughs> I hear that. <clears throat> Maria? Um, I just want to add, I, I mean, I've been listening to all of you making comments about this. And I, I think I agree with what you're saying here, because through this process and this, in this specifically what we're reading today, the, the prayer of the poor, and it's kind of putting us in that lineage in that line and alignment to pray for all these things that we go through. It is good to, I, I feel, it is good to recognize and see how nice I am, where my bound, if I'm too much in my boundary side, if I feel jealousy, but that's also an awakening for us to really find the balance. Yes. Where is the good and how much is too much and how much is too nice and for us to really, through our prayers, of course, help me be better on this side and just become with that alignment and balance within ourselves. Right. I think that's a very, a very well said. It's all about the balance. I, but I, but I want to also to just to also add something to what Ron said because this came up in this workshop. Like we don't, and to, to also Maria's point, we don't see it. We just don't. We don't see it, and so it's important to kind of take a step back and look at like where where am I being am I a pleaser in this relationship yes Angie I was just wanted to say we don't see it however do we feel it don't we feel it oh don't we feel we? something don't we yeah so, so what are we so what are we feeling what is it that you're feeling <clears throat> right I mean we I think we can feel if we're being nice just to get something to appease our own lack we can feel that we just but we we tell ourselves oh but i was being nice right and then but we're like mm. and the same thing i think with other um what we're talking about anger jealousy absolutely or... like also do we always know when we're being angry do we always know when we're, we're acting out of jealousy or out of envy or out of a pleasing you know trying to be a pleaser I mean, we don't know. That's the thing. Right. But, uh, and also, when we recognize those behaviors and those traits, it doesn't matter if it was before, at the moment, or after. Remember, right now, we recognize those things. In the past, prior to these studies, that was nothing. We thought that was normal. and We, we didn't thought it was recognize. normal. Right. It was normal. It's human nature. And the fact that we recognize that today, even though if it's a day later, oh, my God, I behaved this way, or I answered <laughs> this way, or, you know, it's like, Darn, I'm, I'm recognizing this a lot sooner and I need to correct that or make improvement to correct them. You know, last night I was teaching uh, the seventh class of Kabbalah One live in Holland Park. By the way, we're going to be doing a Kabbalah Two. Oh, I was, do you, do you know when? Uh, we're working on that. Okay, cool. I'm just planting seeds right now. So um, I talked about body consciousness. And one of the participants took offense to the term body. And what, context, conscious, ah, what, what would be the problem with body what, consciousness? What? I mean, I'm saying it, ego is body consciousness. Your soul is inside this body. Your soul is dominated by body consciousness. We just, we can't distinguish between 1% and 99% because in the 1% we have body consciousness with all this physicality it's overwhelming were they thinking about it in the context of like anorexia body consciousness well body image body image yes. yeah and i was like how do i'm like i'm like how do i address this point cuz you know like, what do you say? I'm like, look, I understand that negative connotation. I understand the connotations that body image has for people. And I want to respect that that's an issue. But we're talking about, some, why is that coming up in body consciousness? It's like, that's your issue. Uh, yeah. Someone who may have been fighting that issue their entire life yeah. Yeah. is not going to like that, which in all fairness, I understood, right? I understand, and I was allowing for that, but I'm not changing the, can we change the word? I don't think you're gonna, by the way, by the way, same thing happened with bread of shame. Some people didn't like the shame word. 
Oh, it's like they don't like the bread. <laughs> and they don't like bread's okay. The bread They're okay shame. with the bread. They don't like the shame. <laughs> the word shame. Like, can we say it a different way? I'm like, look, in Hebrew, it's lechem bizayon. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know anywhere they're saying it. It's shame. Look, but we're talking about the shame part where we don't feel good about what we're receiving. We're receiving light and then we don't feel good about it because we didn't earn it. So it's bread of shame. I'm just saying like words. <laughs> I'm just throwing out there. It's like words. Like we get triggered by words. Yep. <laughs> my trigger, my responsibility. It's real, it's hugely again, the goal is to be okay with what is. In terms of my life experience, what I'm going through, I need to be okay with this. I'm gonna make decisions about who I'm gonna be with and who I'm not, and where I'm at boundaries and where I'm not. And if I'm people pleasing, I don't want to do that. It's not being me. I need to be the cause. Why do I need to be the cause? Mm -hmm. I need to be the cause because when I am the cause, I'm mm -hmm. like the primary cause, the prime cause, the creator, the light. When I'm the cause, I'm like the light. And to manifest light, I need to be like the light. When I'm the effect of everything going on around me, I'm disconnected from the light. This is Kabbalah 1. When I'm the effect and I allow my thinking, my actions, my speech to be determined by the things that are going on, the externals, I'm disconnected from the light. When I'm the cause, I'm connected to the light. I'm manifesting light. When I'm a pleaser, it's about them. How do I endear myself to them? <laughs> it's also when I'm stuck in needing to change the words. It's... Yeah, those words aren't working for me. Yeah, those words, well, then figure out what that's about and work on changing that because we're not changing the words. I mean, I... Yeah, it's interesting. But yeah, there have been a lot of words over time yeah. I've had to do that with. Yes. So what I was going to say is that um, bizayon also means um, humiliation and disgrace. Humiliation and disgrace. Okay, oh, good. I, so wish I, like, had, I wish I had you in the class. It's more than that saying. It's, you know, something. It's humiliating. Different. It's Can humiliating. Can you write that down? What, what yeah. word? It's the Hebrew is like bizayon. But, but yeah, you were saying that it, we use bread of shame, but it's like it's like bread of humiliation. Mm -hmm. Here it is, Bizayon. Now, by the way, I didn't anticipate the conversation going in this direction, but it plays directly <laughs> to what we're about to take a look at. Suzanne, I see your hand up. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. So I had a, a very weird experience. I've been stuck in an Please area share. of my life. This sounds great. Oh yeah, it's a it's killer. So here we go. It's financial. It's stuck. Like somebody turned the water off. Suzanne couldn't work. Suzanne couldn't receive money. I mean, it's really bad. Okay, like really bad. So Wednesday night rolls around, and I I don't know. Some meditation came up on YouTube, and it was like a what do you call it? A therapist, and she used some Buddhist techniques going inside, right? And it, I felt better, right? Like just acknowledge whatever, like just be still and watch what's coming up. Well, I had no idea what was coming up the next day. Like, it was like Pandora's box. So anger came up, rage came up, control came up, pride came up, shame came up. Like, just figure anything negative. Fear came up, like everything, like a whole that. Can of, a whole can of worms. Yeah, the whole can. And so I was talking, I was screaming. I was like, somebody help me. I can't effing do this by myself. I mean, how much longer is this gonna go? I can't do this. You know what I mean? Like, how? You know, like it was crazy, like crazy lady in the house. Right. Close the doors. Don't let anybody hear you, whatever. But and then I had moments where I was just conversational, like, look, I'm human. I'm, it's concealed. I don't get it. I need help. Like, but it took me a long time to get to the Zohar. But I felt like the self-expression had to come through. <laughs> you know, and sometimes, it, you know, sometimes, no, we have to we have yeah. to pro we need time to process. Yeah. And so I gave this is a, very different for me. Normally, I wouldn't normally. And then I had to deal with things that dealt with scarcity and poverty, like, you know, public <laughs> assistance crap. Like, who wants to deal with that? I'd rather go out and try to make money doing X, Y or Z or learn about this. And I, I thought, no, go, you're in the pits today. Do that. 
you it's got to get done. Like you got to make these phone calls. And it, it just was horrible, right? Like icky, icky, icky. And I thought, well, you know, at the end of the day, like at six o'clock on Thursday, it started to lift, which was really fascinating. Nice. But I mean, empty, like empty space inside. You know what I mean? Like nothing there, dead space, dead space. Right. It's like, wow. And I thought, well, at least it's, you know, you exposed it, you confronted it. And this, this talk that surfaced in my YouTube the night before was like, the, it's like the diamond is, um, the garbage is the gift concept, right? Like the, yes. the antidote is in the poison. You yes. got to face it. And normally I wouldn't do that. Normally I would dance around tiptoe, not, no, 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 not going there. No, you know, cause that's going to be a can of worms. And so I thought, all right, let it happen. And now I'm like, kind of like, I'm not freaked out, but I'm like concerned that, I mean, I got really angry. I was up most of the night last night. Like I couldn't sleep. That's fine. I was praying and doing my own little thing. And I'm like, okay, whatever this takes, <laughs> you know? at, least, right. at least you confronted it instead of, Dragging the luggage around? Right. You, right? You, you, listen, you embraced the process. Yeah, it was, it's nasty. Like, who wants to do that? Like, I hate getting angry. Like, I'm but freaked you know, out like, about it. And I'm, we don't know the different, I don't know the exact circumstances, and we don't need yeah, to. Yeah, I'm know sure it wasn't good. That came <laughs> up and we can all relate. We've all been there. But the thing is that what our teachers tell us is, the longer we ignore stuff, oh. The more intense it's gonna get. Oh. It's gotta get your attention. Wow. Hello, anybody in there? It's gonna it's gotta get our attention. Wow. It's Thank as you. If, it's as if the alarm goes off on your phone and you get <laughs> snooze, and every time it goes back on every eight minutes or whatever it is, it's louder yeah. and more intense. And now I got something to deal with. Now yeah. I really have something to, and that's, you know, and so, and then, you know, I mean, part of what we want to take away from that experience, you had it firsthand, we all have it secondhand. <laughs> it's like, you know what? Don't ignore stuff. Like I have a situation going on right now, which is just like, it's a crazy situation, but like, I kind of, I've kind of known about it for a long time, but I just wasn't ready to deal with it. And that's okay too. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. There were lots of layers of this that it was like, yes. oh, yes. oh, no. But like, listen, just, that's a gift. Ew. This is a gift. Yeah. Oh, my it's, God. It, yes, it's a gift. because it's, <laughs> I'm like crying and laughing. Yeah, I know. It's a gift because it's giving you a, a, an opportunity to, to reveal your gifts. It's giving you an okay. opportunity to gain freedom from this. Okay. I was hoping I didn't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but I didn't go there last night in my prayers in the middle of the night. I was like, no, no, you just, this is process and it's, it's going to be okay. In some weird way. Yeah. Probably. It's going to be great. Who, who okay. do you think told you the voice that said <laughs> you're throwing the baby out of the bathwater? Whose voice do you think that was? Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. The I good news was I was still. The more yeah, intense the experience is, the more light there is yet to be revealed. Okay, that's good because there was a lot of intensity. If it wasn't like, important, really the other side wouldn't be wasting their time with you. Ah. Uh, they move on to something else. No, there's okay. something big coming, Suzanne. Leon around. Yeah, I bet. I bet. But I was like, man, this is weird. There's something and big coming. You know what else is really strange but interesting? And you might have a comment to speak to because I'm sure other people have this too. There's the frustration of the stuck, which, you know, we know that I think it was Rob Oshlog said you have to kind of like be fed up or one of the Robs said you got to be fed up and kind of like done with it, which is what I was. Right. But then there was the other side. So then I would feel like a, an easement, even if I did yell or even if I did have a calm conversation, something opened up. Yes. And it was necessary and the steam was coming off. Did you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, there was a breakthrough. I, Even I, though I don't like to do it through anger, no, but it was like, but no, yeah, yeah but it's, but it's almost like that's where we need to get for like, you know, for the breakthrough to happen. It's like the okay. pressure mounts and it's like, it, um, it's what you call the primal scream. You have to do that primal yeah. scream. But can yeah, I, I guess, no, Suzanne, like I haven't heard you this self-expressed and freed up in year in, in yeah, year. I bet. Yeah, this so you're like, reading me you're totally, you're yeah. totally on, you're totally oh, on. Like I would have never said this years ago, never. <laughs> 
Never. That's awesome. Maybe to my teacher. That's about it. Awesome. But, but yeah. you know, look at how freeing it feels. Yeah, I know. Like it's a confession. It's not like. Like it's a confession. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like to expose it. it. That's really, it was just no, like. Oh, like it's funny. not only, and I just want to say, it's not only that you are able to have awareness of it. It's like next level when you can share it because you are sharing it is assisting you in processing it even further. And the other important point is, even though you might have had hesitation to share it in a group setting, we all are getting the benefit of it. Okay, good. I, I hope I didn't have to go through this by my, you know, for myself. No, of course <laughs> I not. I promised I would no. share. Like, I'm like, I want to help people. No, like, I don't want other people to be in this. That's why it's important to share this. Okay. And, 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 the thank sharing. You, and thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, you guys, for creating a no, safe space. I, 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 no, I'm glad. I'm so glad that you did. I'm so glad we had we could create this space for you, uh, Andrea. I saw your hand up. Yes. So, I had a this morning. I was I was also in that very low. Like it's after the holidays, and that kind of it wasn't exactly a crash, but it was a very very. It was a low, and this I started just talking to the creator and. I heard that just go ahead and go home. That's it. You're just go home, go back to your parents. There's nothing else I can do for you. And I said, but that's, but you're, please, that doesn't. And the voice was soft and it sounded like it was coming from the creator, but we, it does the dark, does the opponent come sometimes trick you and make it sound like it's the creator, that soft, loving voice, but I'm like, you're giving up on me. This doesn't sound like the creator, but your voice is so loving and sound. It sounds, you know, like you're giving me sage advice. Right. But it's like, we got to look at the internal energy. What is going on? What would the other side say in this situation? Give, Give up. up. You know, the light's not going to say, Give up. The light might say, Let's try a different route. Yeah. That's what I figured. What's the workaround? Yeah. Look, I mean, I, I mean, we all have these situations going on in life. I have a situation going on in my life now. I don't know what the, I don't know who I'm hiring for this job. I have no idea. I'm not even sure how to figure it out. I know it's, the problem isn't how. The problem is who. Sometimes we feel the problem is how, like, how am I going to solve this? No, the question to ask is who. Who's going who's gonna to solve this? Not going to be me. Now, I know I have a who issue. I'm not sure how to pick the who. So I'm talking to other who's to help me pick the who. But at what point is, is where do you, do you let the, the light do the- Very as early as possible. Speaking. Light, I don't have the answer here. I need your assistance. Please help me. And when we're frustrated, like that, just saying that kind of takes the edge off. Mm -hmm. yeah but it's so illogical yep but that's where things come from they come from the light they don't come from logic all right we're not going to think our way out of it one of the students last night shared in this in this class shared that um her best creative moments are when she is is not being analytical about it it's fascinating. Of course not. When you're being overly analytic, you're out of the zone. Like you're out of the zone. She knows when she's in the zone, out of the zone. She's got to let it flow. She's got to get out of her own way. And sometimes we have to get out of our own. We think we have to fix it. I mean, we got to do stuff, but like we need to invite the light in. We need to, we need to like de-escalate sometimes. I think that was one of the hardest things I had to learn was that I didn't make decisions how to let the light show me the right answer. Yosef Schneer used to get so upset with me because I was like, I got to figure this out because you don't figure out anything. Right. Except how to stop figuring it out. <laughs> right. You know, it's almost like someone asked you, I, like as a joke, sometimes someone will ask me a hard question. And I'll be like, can you make it multiple choice? It's like, I got a problem. I don't have the answer. 
a light. Can you just give me, you know, just guide me. Give me the choices. Let me see the right choice. I don't see anything right now. So let me see the right choice. All right, Phyllis, let's, keep, let's get back to the English there. Okay. Um, and we pray that these four clipot do not pursue the prayer as many demons are attached to these klipot. And we pray that these four do not attach. We pray to remove anger by way of example. Go ahead. There are seven ministers who have 70 more attached to them. Those 70 bring allegation in each and every firmament through which the prayer passes and 700 million demons are attached to them. So that's what we have to navigate. 700 million demons. Just, you know. No wonder it's so hard. It's hard to do that. This is, and, and, and how do we navigate that? With our consciousness. And with our humility. Because that's a lot. It's like, what does it mean to show up? What does it mean, prayer of the poor? Our, 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 what does it mean, prayer of the poor? It means showing up with humility. I don't merit what I'm asking for. I'm asking for it anyhow. That's what our teachers say we're doing. We only have about two minutes, so I want to skip ahead to verse, um, verse 192, uh, page 267 of my book. With Shabbat Bishma. Okay, listen, it is, af I think uh, we're past midday on this, on this Friday, so the energy of Shabbat is already starting to infuse our realm. So it's already available, and here we're going to connect to some deep insight about what is Shabbat. Go ahead. On Shabbat, the Holy One, blessed be he, Zeran Pin, descends with the three patriarchs, Chesed, Vura, and Tiferet, to receive his only daughter through them, referring to the prayer, which is the female principle. Okay, so we have this visual of the creator, Zeran Pin, the six spherot that channel energy from the upper realm into Malchut, our realm. And that Zeran Pin shows up with the Chesed, Vura, and Tiferet, the three patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's three, to receive the female principle. Keep going. This is the secret of Shabbat, which consists of shin and bat. Oh, we're deconstructing the word Shabbat. It's shin and bat. What's the significance of that? The three lines of the letter shin refer to the three patriarchs. Through them, the Holy One, blessed be he, receives the prayer, Shabbat. His only daughter. That's at, the bat in Shabbat. Go ahead. At that time, the celestial living creatures that are called by the name Yud K Vav K say, as it is written, lift up your heads, O you gates, and lift them up, you everlasting doors, that the King of Glory may come in. So you know, several uh, Psalms. That's that's Psalm twenty-four, verse nine. But you know, we th it's this verse about. Opening the gates. What does it mean, opening the gates? This is us in a realm where what, Shab what happens on Shabbat is there's this energetic transformation that's taking place. The energy of upper realm is now here. It's available. It's settling on Malchut, or Malchut is raising up to it. Either way, that connection is happening, and this is gives us a greater opportunity to channel energy from the upper realm. And that's what Shabbat is. It's the patriarchs, Chesek Vurtiferet, connecting with Bat, Malchut, our realm. Zachor Vishamor, masculine energy and feminine energy. Potential and manifestation together, channeling that energy into our realm, giving us the ability to remove chaos from our world and to create a week that follows free of chaos. Okay, everybody. That's so cool.
It is. Thank cool. you. <laughs> it is cool. Right. Very cool. Thank you all. Love you all. Shabbat Thank shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thanks, guys. Thank you, David. Shalom. 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 Shalom.